Dwayne Wade decided to leave the only team he has played for, agreeing to a two-year deal with the Bulls. He's going home. Pat Riley said he regrets letting Wade leave the Heat, acknowledging that he was floored by Wade's decision. Oh, Max Kellerman. <laughs> Has Pat Riley lost his mojo? <laughs> Pat Riley lost his mojo? <laughs> Pat Riley is the gangster of the NBA. He's the you want to know who's like the alpha in the NBA? I keep saying it's LeBron James. It's actually Pat Riley. Oh, he gets his way. It's unbelievable. Of course, I mean, look, does Pat Riley really want a declining Dwayne Wade? On the, on the roster, on the payroll, in a league, even though it's an escalating cap, and there, but uh, with a salary cap, a 34-year-old, coming off an excellent season, by the way, where he's now going to have to overpay to keep him, or can he let him go and let that be someone else's problem, and then say, oh, shucks, I shouldn't have let Dwayne Wade go. I mean, does he expect people to actually believe I should have been more involved? Pat Riley wasn't more involved. He got exactly what he wanted, I believe, from this Stephen A. He wanted more flexibility with the roster going forward. He wanted to get younger going forward. He didn't want to be in a position that the Lakers were in with Kobe Bryant when he couldn't play anymore, but he was getting paid more than anyone else in the NBA at that point. He wanted this to happen, and he got it. You're wrong. I don't have enough time to tell you why, but I will tell you this. LeBron James walked out the door in part because of his relationship with Pat Riley. Nobody hates Pat Riley. You have to profoundly respect this man. He's a winner and their class personified. But you could have threw LeBron a little bit more perks. That did not happen. Dwayne Wade, it's a $4 million difference. The $4 million difference is the $98 million you gave Hassan Whiteside, but he was willing to hold off on $4 million if Kevin Durant was willing to come. If that's all it took, to, break, to give to a three-time champion who took pay cuts in the past so you could sign other guys. That's all you Think had to do. That. But what I'm saying you is... You got to take pay cuts the whole time. The man, they got 19 points, the man averaged 19 points, shot 45% from the field. They went to the second round of the playoffs. Dwayne Wade looked three years younger. And we yep. only talk about a three-year deal. It's not a long-term deal. It was a mistake for Pat Riley. But more importantly... Ain't going to be that, that next year. Here's the deal. But here's the deal. It's not just about the personnel. It's about the people that you need out there to speak on your behalf to make your franchise that much more attractive. Now, obviously, it's South Beach. It's Miami. No state income tax in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. All of those things help. But in the end, stars that are on your team aren't vouching That's for you. That's what I heard you. about the Lakers Wait. with Kobe Bryant. How'd that work out? Still no one wants to sign well, over well, there well, because well. They, they tanked the team That's by giving them that well, deal. That has a lot to do with Jim Buss. Come on now. That ain't about Kobe. That's about Say Jim Pat Buss. Riley's not Jim Buss? No, he's not Jim Buss. Pat Riley's Pat Riley. I'm just saying Stephen a, it's a different era. I defer to your basketball <laughs> knowledge. And See, yet it's here, it's the brilliance. I must say. It's the brilliance of Max Kellerman. It's the brilliance of Max Kellerman in this particular situation. <laughs> defer to my, defer to me because we don't have enough time for me to get into it. And yet you're wrong. We'll talk about it. I am not wrong. Wrong. I am not wrong. Security, get him off the show. So good to get have you show. back, Sass, Stephen A. Everybody you. missed you. Max, you're the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Carmelo Anthony joined Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and Chris Paul at the start of the ESPYs, calling for everyone to do more in light of the social unrest around the country. Anthony is also hosting a town hall meeting in Los Angeles today, which he says is a chance for citizens, law enforcement officials, and politicians to have an open dialogue. Stephen A., do you like this, or should athletes stay quiet on these subjects? I absolutely love it, and I'm proud of the fellas that, to, you know, doing what they did at the ESPYs. What I will caution, however, is that I love it as long as you know what you are talking about and, dare I say, have the ability to articulate yourself eloquently on these certain issues. Um, you know, when you got guys that don't know the issues or, dare I say, don't speak very well, they don't need to be speaking about it because these issues are incredibly uncomfortable to a lot of people in our society who pay their hard-earned money, come to a game. They don't want to see somebody in the arena on center, on center court, you know, p bringing attention to these issues. Their attitude is they're paying their hard-earned money to patronize your product, give them what they paid for. That's the mentality. Obviously, that we can't feel that way in this society, particularly when you're an African-American and you're seeing some of the issues that have permeated our society, uh, particularly uh, acts of violence, on behalf of police officers against unarmed black individuals, uh, just as reprehensible uh, acts uh, by other individuals against police officers like we saw in Dallas. 
uh, we can't have that. And so the players bringing attention to it and saying this has to stop is something that I greatly, greatly appreciate. Um, I think it's important for them to be conscientious observers, to do what they can to bring attention to an issue so we can all grab a hold of it and run with it, not look to them to do everything. Uh, the one other the reason why I also said, Max, that it's important that you you know what you're talking about and you can articulate yourself appropriately is that it's also about who you are too. Like I respect the hell out of Carmelo Anthony. I got a lot of love for him. He's a good brother. But LeBron James is, is profound for another reason. Not just his level of intellect, his level of success also comes into the equation. Because when I see LeBron speak and I see Dwayne Wade speak, I'm looking at two individuals who are three-time champions, and I'm able to say about them, they're doing what they're supposed to do on the basketball court. So off the court, if they feel the need to bring attention to this, great. I still feel the same way about Melo, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that I know a lot of New Yorkers in the streets that came out and said, damn it, I don't want to hear nothing from him. I need him to get to the playoffs. I need him to get out of the first round. Now, that's a real... Uh, um, just a juvenile way to look at things. Incredibly unfair to Carmelo. But that's a reality that Carmelo is going to have to face. Because when you see him bringing attention to this issue as much as I will sit here, and so many African Americans will sit here and absolutely positively applaud him, we are cognizant of the fact that there are others that's going to show up to Madison Square Garden and now look at him and say, now show us what you got on the basketball court because we see the noise, you, noise you're making off of it. I want to respond to the Carmelo thing first. And sure. I want to tell you what I plan to say. Um, there's also the element that, and it's unfair to Carmelo, who's a great player and obviously feels this very deeply. But yes, There he are does. those who will look and wonder about ulterior motives because uh, the idea being that he has, he's kind of pumping himself up by taking the kind of stand he's doing and maybe it's doing uh, more good particularly in this era of heightened social consciousness as a result of social media etc then he is actually taking a risk by stepping up there's there's that if you're not a champion there's also this can't just be the guy on the end of the bench standing up that's right uh, because then people say no one cares but 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 it's not that's not fair to Carmelo because Carmelo obviously feels this strongly good for him he's for from the, the streets he that's cares right. about it that's he's, right. he's real and, all and he's a great player even if he, yes, he, he hasn't won a championship to me, I've been waiting for this era and these guys, and particularly this guy for a long time, meaning LeBron James. Not Dwayne Wade, although he clearly also feels it very deeply. Chris Paul, all these guys. The fact that the best athlete in the world, the best player in the game, and the reigning champion comes out and does this, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be. Now, I've been waiting for this era also because if you, you know, Joe Lewis, heavyweight champion, never took controversial stands because in that time and place you really couldn't. Uh, Muhammad Ali was as much of a, a product of his era as he was a leader in his era. But just because there was a countercultural revolution by the 60s and early 70s and that atmosphere, that climate allowed someone like Ali to take a stand. But it doesn't have to be that way. Tiger Woods could have uh, boycotted Augusta. The year he was going for, I think it was a grand slam, but the point was he didn't want to do it. They had a male-only policy, remember? Yep. And Tiger Woods, here it was, fell, fell out of the sky on a silver platter for him. It's not even really taking that big a risk or making that much of a sacrifice. Here's a social issue you can stand for. And he chose to play anyway and not walk away from it. And, and Michael Jordan, Republicans buy sneakers too. And, uh, you know, the, the, in, it, 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago, more difficult to do this. Now there is a climate that exists that allows it. But for LeBron to do it, very hard to imagine the counterfactual. Very hard to imagine, well, even though the climate exists, let's say LeBron didn't do it. But that's hard to imagine. He did it, so you say, well, the well, climate exists, he can do it. The fact that he chooses to do it. He deserves enormous credit. No question for it. about it. And I tell you this much, too. Nobody deserves more credit than LeBron for all the reasons you just articulated. But somebody who, whether it's a close or a distant second in all of this, is Chris Paul. Here's why you're the president of the Players Association. And so a lot of times, particularly with a collective bargaining negotiation coming up next summer, okay, because you know either one side or both sides are going to back up of the present collective bargaining agreement by December. You want to see, you, you, you want the public on your side. Chris Paul gave no thought to that whatsoever. 
he was interested in doing what's right. Give you another name. Sure. Of course, the white guy's got to bring up at least the commissioner, Adam Silver. No question. I mean, he deserves no because Adam Silver, again, is it in his best financial interest to take the kind of social stands he's taken? And pull the All-Star game from Charlotte. Pull the All-Star game. No question. Encourage players to, to do these kind of things. Okay. Yes, I believe it's also in his financial interest. But that doesn't mean he doesn't deserve credit for taking the stand he does. Because I could easily imagine a world where Adam Silver simply doesn't decide to have that position, that, including Donald Sterling, banning him for life. Like, no question. No, this is a and LeBron that, was in on yes. Donald Sterling, too. That's right. He's helping aid this kind of stuff. We have to get to break, but I did, did want to let you guys know this just came across. Michael Jordan telling the Undefeated.com, a new website, doing great work here at ESPN, that he's also going to get involved. He lost his father to a senseless act of violence, and he plans to be a voice now and, and stand up for well, these social issues as well. Some people would say it's about time. What I would say as somebody who knows Michael Jordan, that there's an awful lot that he does quietly. Mm -hmm. He's not one to speak a lot about issues but he does a lot of good he things. hasn't been but a catalyst needs, for change in this arena to. but as long as he joins it that's yep. fine and, that's right. and this is per clearly personal for him there's more on that on the undefeated.com right. but when we come back